So, you come into my house expecting to know what cars that you should buy. The forbidden list is now, my friend. But what do you have for me? <laughs> also, how's Kumara doing? What's going on with y'all, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that your day is going phenomenal. And if it isn't, <laughs> I keep telling you this. Do not, and I mean, do not let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. Be unstoppable. So today I'm not even gonna cap. I was supposed to be chilling like a villain on a beach with no ceilings, man. I wasn't even supposed to be making a video today, but then it hit me. Yo, these are some cards that you really might wanna look out for because the Forbidden List has played a huge impact on them. That's right, guys. I think that after the Forbidden List, that these cards could potentially spike all the way up. And you might wanna pick up these particular cards if you are looking to play them right now because people are being skittish and they as cheap as they'll ever be. I predict on May 12th that the Forbidden List will come out and will tell all. So you got until about then to figure out if you wanna get these cards or not. Without further ado, let's jump on in and start talking about these particular cards and why you should pick them up. All right, so the first card or cards I wanna to talk to you about is actually a particular engine that players are thinking that is going to be hit on the forbidden list. That players are, th that was weird, but you understand what I'm saying, right? The Faithful Adventure Package is seen as relatively expensive. Not only is Water Enchantress of the Temple about $50 a copy, but you also have to get your Rite of Aramaceers that also happen to be $50 a copy. I would not buy these cards at that particular price, especially if it does wind up on the Forbidden List. A lot of times, if you want to invest into this card game, you're going to have to take a risk. I think that the Water Enchantress Rite of Aramacia risk is definitely worth the award, only if you can get it cheaper than what it's listed for right now. Both these cards did see a slight dip in their price point. Right now, they're about $45 a copy, but the caveat to this is that I've been seeing players trying to flip their adventure token package everywhere. If you have balls of steel and no fear for the Forbidden List, then right now may be the best time to pick up this adventure package because if it doesn't get hit by the Forbidden List, yeah, this thing gonna go up. This is easily one of those high risk, high reward situations, but if you're not living your life in risk, then you'll never get the reward. Peasant Cali is correct. Sometimes in order to be a true king, you have to take risks that others may not. Just like how we have dumped out Lich off and taken a risk on the true best deck in the entire card game. Branded Despia is easily the best deck, winning major events all across the board. And that's why I think Alipur Dresser of Despia is going to be the perfect card to get. What's that? You don't believe me? You don't think that I've dropped out Lich the Golden Lord for a better card? That's fair. Because I'm not even King Kelly. I am actually <laughs> Theater Kelly. If my act was genuinely that great, then maybe you should pick up yours as Alibur Jester of Despia sitting at a low price of $30 each. This is a complete steal as players are still thinking that Alibur will make it on the forbidden list. <laughs> According to my analytics, Alibur Jester of Despia is only three per case. Meaning that if you want your play set of Alibur, you have to buy an entire case of Ghosts from the Past 2. That's 12 displays at an MSRP of around $800. Don't be a fool, my friend. If you want to keep up, well, buying your Alibur's at $30 each might be the best deal of your life if you are planning on playing the deck. Next, regardless on how you put it, I genuinely think that this is going to be a card that will go up in price. Instant Fusion is easily my favorite cup of ramen as this card has been amazing over the course of the years. Being able to special summon fusion monsters like Elder Entity Nord into your side of the field. The good old days. The good old days. The, the good old days? That, that's not how I remember it. It wasn't that good. 
Eventually, Instant Fusion was hit to one because it was just that good of a card. Fast forward into 2022, not only do we have ridiculous cards like Skill Drain at three, and then of course, Raigeki at three. Fun fact, there has never been a time in TCG Yu-Gi-Oh! history that we've ever had Raigeki at three, so yeah. And if you don't believe me, well, I have a history of Yu-Gi-Oh! series, and you can go ahead and check that out, that thing is fire. I genuinely suspect Instant Fusion to come off the Forbidden List in some capacity, maybe semi-limited, maybe unlimited, but even if it doesn't, Instant Fusion has major implications inside of the Dimension 4 set. Not only do Predator Plants get an Instant Fusion summonable monster, as well as the Pendulum Strategy getting an exclusive Instant Fusion summonable monster, we also know that the Zombie Strategy, which is also supported inside of Dimension Force, also would be able to become a lot better with instant fusion. So regardless, if Naruto's ramen stays limited inside of the Hidden Leaf Village or becomes two or three of for everyone to enjoy, I think that this is a card you definitely should be looking at picking up. I know it may seem odd for Kali to Don to look out for the little guy, but we told you so many important things because we need the little guy around. Not only did we tell you about Fluunderies being one of the most powerful strategies in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Kurt game before that happened. We also told you to pick up Rise of the Mega Monarchs and then decided to reprint them after you've already made your share. But now it's time for Kali Dadan to tell you something else. Picking up your Fluunderese core, which includes Fluunderese Advent of the Adventure, might be the most advantageous right now. With the Rise of the Mega Monarch confirmed reprint, Fluunderese Advent of the Adventure shot up to $15 to $20 each. But now, because of ban list speculation, you can get them for 10. This is normally a deal of a lifetime. If you're a Fluenda Reese player, or just a budget player looking for an ultra competitive deck, take advantage of it. If I were a betting man, and the only bets that I take are ones that I know I can win, I would surefire pick up Fluenda Reese at Vin in the Adventure for a Fluenda Reese player. Because after the Forbidden List, Squamata may not like you so much for not getting this card on time. And lastly, to add on to Theater Cali's antics, I've noticed that there's another engine card that definitely should be picked up right now. Players do think that Despia will be hit on the Forbidden List, and I think that would be a fair assessment if the strategy wasn't really so new inside of the competitive scene. But one thing I know absolutely will not be hit is the Fright for Package. Now to backtrack just a little bit back to what I said at the first part of the Forbidden List, picking up your Fateful Adventure Package, I 100% still do think that it's a good idea if you can get it for really cheap, despite the potential of it being hit on the Forbidden List. Personally, I would pick up Rite of Aramaceers, at least two copies, and Water Enchantress of the Temple, maybe one copy. And the reason why I say that is because even with those hits, the Adventure Token Engine will still be really good. On the flip side, the Fright for Patchwork may actually work in the benefit of Fluffle players of those particular cards being hit. With the Despia community being split on playing the Fright for Package versus being able to play the Adventure Token Package, a hit to the Adventure Tokens means that the Fright for Package becomes a little more desirable. That would easily make the Fright for Engine go up in price, and if you're stuck on that side, then needing and not having, then having and not needing, you in trouble. Both Fright for Patchwork and Edge of Chain have seen an increase in price, but I'm pretty confident that they'll go even higher post the Forbidden List as there'll be a bigger demand. And that's all that we're gonna share with you today. I've already told the other Callies, including King Callie, to keep their mouths shut if they value their families. But of course, I'm a businessman, so if you wanna see more amazing content that will help you on your journey, go ahead and check out one of these videos. They're pretty good. And if you also like Master Duel, if that's your fancy, then check out Master Duel Cali. He's a cool guy. I really hope you're out there making a name for yourself in the name of Squamata. Because if you are, we'll definitely meet again.